Good evening, everyone. My name is Lisa, and I'd like to thank the organisers for the opportunity to talk today and all the previous speakers for their beautiful presentations. So today I'm going to talk about my project in designing targeted cellular therapies to cure brain cancer in preclinical models. The diagnosis is glioblastoma. That is a sentence I hope you never have to hear. This is one of the most aggressive forms and fatal forms of brain cancer, and for patients with this diagnosis, the prognosis is dire. An average overall survival of only 12 to 15 months, despite current treatments. In young children, a type of brain tumour called diffuse intrinsic pontine glioma, or DIPG, is a truly insidious disease that grows in an area of the brain that is impossible to operate in. These primary school age children are given less than one year to live. And as many of us can imagine, the brain controls much of our cognitive and motor functions and really controls a lot of who we are. For patients with brain cancer, the brain tumors can really rob them of this. Here I'm showing a beautiful microscopy image of a glioblastoma tumor in pink growing within a living mouse brain. This image was captured by a talented postdoc in my lab, Dr. Matthias Mulitzani, and here he has labeled the tumor in pink and the blood vessels in yellow. And we can really see how this tumor infiltrates within the healthy tissue and grows intertwined. Now standard of care um, is surgical resection followed by chemotherapy and or radiation. And really this protocol hasn't changed for the last 30 years. Through images like this, I hope we can appreciate how difficult it is for neurosurgeons to fully remove the tumor. Remembering that they don't have this pink dye to help guide them. They're going in it much more blindly. And as many of us know far too well, the severe side effects of blunt nonspecific therapies such as chemotherapy and radiation mean that patients face toxic side effects. However, I'm here to tell you that we li are living in a paradigm of personalized medicine, where we can tailor treatments to patients and their diseases. An example of this is a cellular therapy known as chimeric antigen receptor, or CAR T cell therapy. And this will be the focus of my talk today. Before I get into that, I'd like to take a step back and talk about our immune system, an incredible defense mechanism that is built to protect us from infection and cancer. Immune cells, such as the T cell, are designed to survey our body and seek and destroy pathogens and cancerous cells. And this occurs through a highly specific interaction between the receptor on the T cell and an antigen on a cancer cell. But of course, no system is perfect and ca cancer cells can adapt and hide away from our immune system, a concept that we call immune evasion. However, what if we can actually modify our immune cells to regain their ability to seek out these cancer cells? And this really is the basis of CAR T cells. In this technology, what we can do is take a blood sample from a patient, isolate the immune T cells, and modify them to express a specific receptor, what we call the CAR. When these cells are reinfused back into the patient, they are directed to specifically kill the cancer cells meaning that we are leaving our healthy um, tissue unharmed. A pivotal case in the CAR T cell field is this um, patient, Emily Whitehead, who was a child diagnosed with leukemia in 2010. In 2012, she was the first child to receive CAR T cell therapy, and now she is more than 10 years cancer-free. Now, our... Um, the, lab, the mission of our lab and many others across the world is to translate this success into brain cancer. And we want to do this by developing new and novel CAR T cell therapies um, for patients with brain cancer. To, in order to design these CARs, we must first understand what tumor antigens we are targeting. So we have collaborated with hospitals across Australia to obtain rare patient samples. And what we do is we meticulously analyze these samples to understand what antigens are found in these cancer cells. Now, I came along in my PhD and I mined this large data set and I found a particular protein of interest. I found FA3 antigen was highly expressed in both adult and pediatric patients. 
When I delved further into the literature, I found that FA3 had been shown to have a role in the ability for the tumour to grow and survive, and specifically also had um, an expression that was found in these cancer cells and not in healthy cells. Now, there was already an um, antibody against this protein in development that had been shown to be safe um, and specific in humans. And what I did is I used some clever engineering and combined this with our immune cells to, combine, to create what I call the, our FA3 CAR T cell therapy. Now, my work focuses on using preclinical models of two particular brain cancer subsets. What I mentioned before, the pediatric DIPG, and the adult glioblastoma. We use preclinical mouse models um, to uh, replicate what might happen in a patient. So what we can do is implant tumors directly into the brains of these mice to model what a tumor might, how a tumor might grow in the brain. We can then treat these mice with our CAR T cells, similar to what would happen in a patient, and observe the effect over time. So for example, in an untreated group, we would expect, so these are mice that are given the tumor and no treatment, we would expect that this tumor size increases over steadily over time. If a therapy is effective, we would expect in the treatment group for the tumor size to increase initially, but then start to decrease over time as the treatment takes effect. So the first model I used was this pediatric DIPG model. And in my untreated group here, I'm showing um, a steady increase in that tumor size as expected. And this was promising to show that the implantation had worked. When I delivered um, the CAR T cell therapy in these mice, I saw that there was a steady decrease in the tumor size in five out of seven mice. I'm showing these images here to show you the stark difference in the size of these tumors with large tumors sound um, found in red signal and the blue, uh, sorry, small tumors in the blue signal. Importantly, you can see that the five mice in the middle there actually have no tumor at all. And this was absolutely amazing to see this, but I wanted to do more. I wanted to see if this particular therapy could be used in other models. So I moved into the adult GBM model and strikingly, I saw an even better response. Here I'm showing five out of five mice showing a complete clearance of their tumor and interestingly, a sustained um, tumor-free status. Now, the length of the time that these mice remain tumor-free got me thinking, what's actually happening here? Is it that the tumor cells have been completely eradicated, or is there something else that's keeping these tumors at bay? Now, I'm going to talk a little bit about something we, that we call immune memory, and it's one of the benefits of using immune cells. Basically, the concept of this is that a small population um, of these cells can remain in the body for a long time, similar to when you're given a vaccine. And then these cells can become reactivated if they see the same tumor antigen again. My hypothesis was that if these CAR T cells formed a memory population in these mice, then they should have an anti-cancer effect if they saw um, the tumor antigen. So to test this, I took those five mice that had cleared their tumors um, of their GBM, um, cleared their GBM tumor, and I injected tumor cells in the opposite side of the brain. In importantly, I did not give any further treatment as I wanted to test for this memory response. To cut a long story, sh um, story short, um, we were absolutely amazed to see that we had a memory response um, to this tumor implantation in all mice. And we showed that four out of five mice had a complete tumor clearance that lasted up to 130 days. That is more than four months, which is a long time for the lifespan of a mouse. Now this proved that there was in fact a memory population that remained in these mice that could become protective in preventing outgrowth of these implanted tumors. So in summary, I hope I've shown you that this novel FA3 CAR T cell treatment was effective in adult and pediatric brain cancers. I've shown that they have been completely curative in preclinical models. And most importantly, I've shown that they have immune memory that could potentially prevent tumor relapses in patients. We were really excited to publish this work recently in the Journal um, for Immunotherapy of Cancer in August earlier this year.
and also had this um, story picked up by a few news outlets across um, Australia and internationally, including front page of the Herald Sun. <laughs> so our next big goal is to translate this success into the clinic, and we are actively looking at um, performing a first in human clinical trial here in, in, in Melbourne, which will be a fantastic opportunity um, for our brain cancer community. Overall, I'm extremely proud of this work, and I hope that I can have shown you um, the implications of this discovery and how this could be potentially life-changing for patients with brain cancers and their families. I'd like to conclude by acknowledging um, everyone on my team that has been um, a imp very important part of this work, in particular my two supervisors, Misty and Ryan, for all their support, as well as all our funding bodies that make this research possible. Thank you. Thank you.